Hello everybody, welcome to another video and today I want to talk about Incarnon Weapons because I really believe that Incarnon Weapons were one of the best additions to the game in many years, actually. For as long as I can remember, there was always this debate about weapon mods, right? How just straight up damage mods are boring and we would like to have more options when it comes to customizing our weapons with more fun mods, things that affect fire rates, reload speed, that kind of stuff. Because as the game grew and more and more damage focused mods were added, every build basically became the same. You just pack it full of damage mods and maybe you like swap out one or two things depending on the stats on the weapon. So over time, people, which includes me as well, wanted some system that would allow us to customize weapons a little bit more, right? Change the fire rate, change the recoil, whatever it would be, just allow us to customize the weapons a little bit, right? And that's what Incarnon weapons allow you to do, kind of. Because the guns, the Incarnon guns, that is, are only sort of halfway there, because the vast majority of people that I know of will build them to have a low crit chance, and then, what is it, 50% chance to do 2000% damage on a non-crit, because it's just straight up the best option. And that node, that one node that gives you a ton of extra damage, and I know you won't like the next sentence I'm about to say, was a really, really bad idea, and shouldn't have been there because they absolutely shot themselves in the foot with it, because from now on, if an incarnate weapon comes out and doesn't have a node like that, if not just the straight up same node, it's not gonna be considered as good. Because it won't be. I mean, how do you beat a 50% chance on a non-crit to do 2000% extra damage? Like, especially since Rivens are a thing, right? If you get a Riven for the weapon with negative crit, you can effectively turn that node into a 50% crit chance with a 20 times crit multiplier. That's insane. So every Incarnon gun from now on that comes out needs to be on a similar power level or it's not gonna be worth getting in a lot of people's eyes. The only way you can realistically justify not having that node on a weapon is if the weapon is much, much cheaper, it's a lot more fun, or it has so much more AoE that it overshadows the lack of that node or a similar kind of node. Which is why I believe that the Incarnon melees are actually much better design-wise. That's not to say that they are perfect though, because some of the evolutions on the Incarnate Melees are very underwhelming, they just don't do an awful lot, but you do have a lot more choice there, you don't need to specifically pick one of them to make the weapon good. I believe that if you were to look at all the different nodes or evolutions that people took across the game with these Incarnate weapons, they would be very similar on the guns, but far more diverse on the melee weapons. Because the melee weapons are already good as they are and you just tweak them and change a few things here and there with the evolutions, whereas with the guns you go for straight power. They are okay without the evolutions, but vastly more powerful with the evolutions. And that's just the evolutions. The Incarnate modes themselves are also really good and interesting. Right, because you basically have two weapons in one, even though I'm not a massive fan of the Incarnate mode of the shotgun, so I barely ever use it. The question now is, are we gonna get any more Incarnate weapons? Because we already have a primary rifle, we have a secondary pistol, we have a primary shotgun, and we have two melees, a dagger and tonfas. Because there are so many things they could do with them, right? On stream we were talking about an Incarnate bow that would have like homing arrows or some kind of an explosive arrow or some shenanigans kind of stuff. There's just so much stuff they can do. There are so many fun mechanics they could implement into these Incarnate weapons. So while I would love to see more of them, I'm also a little bit worried that those weapons will just become an absolute and definitive best insult in their weapon class. Because while it's not a bad thing to have a best in slot weapon, right, something you can chase and work towards, it will hurt the diversity, which has already been hit with the Eximus rework, right? A lot of weapons are just not usable anymore after the Eximus rework because they don't deal with Eximus all that well. Running around with a subpar weapon just for fun feels worse than ever right now. Now you can say that none of this is true. You can just pick whatever weapon you want, you can choose whatever evolutions you want, there is no reason for you to pick the best option. Well that's nonsense, the vast majority of people will go for the most optimal thing. I mean as the developer of Civilization said and I quote, Given the opportunity, players will optimize the fun out of a game, and therefore, one of the responsibilities of designers is to protect the players from themselves. 
If players find a way to exploit a game by optimizing and repeating a mundane task to get resources or defeat enemies, they will do that. And like it or not, it's true. It might not be true always, you know, but even someone like me, someone that's been playing the game for 10 years and tries to have as much fun as possible, so I tend to use things that I like to use rather than things that are good, will pick the most efficient set of gear to get things done. I can remember multiple instances of me doing something in a way that I didn't enjoy because I just wanted to get it done. And I actively try not to do that. But anyway, I think I've been blabbering for long enough, so I thank you very much for watching as always, guys. Please let me know what you think about the Incarnon weapons in the comment section down below. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.